Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to tell you about the best brush pack for Blender and it's completely free and I'll show you how you can install it and use it. Make sure you check out my sculpting playlist for other sculpting tutorials and beginner guides. And if you like what I do, then check out my new character course and look out for my new Kickstarter on 2D drawing using game art. All the links are in the description. So first of all, where do you get the brush pack from? Well, it's from BlendSwap. And if you just search for Orb, you will find this beautiful pack and you can download it if you sign up to BlendSwap. It's all completely free and it works in all versions of Blender from 2.7 upwards, including the recent sculpting releases. So let's go across to Blender and see what that looks like. So here I am in the basic scene and I want to bring in my brushes where we go up to File and then Append. You'll need to navigate to the file that you've downloaded and of course unzipped. And here it is on my machine. So ZBrush or Brush Pack for Blender. Double click on that. If we go into the actual brush file, the orb brushes.blend, double click on that and you can go to brush. Now you can see all the brushes in that scene and you can click on the last or first orb brush and then shift click the last one or first one to make sure you select all the orb brushes that have the title orb in them. Then you can press append and they are all now in our blender scene. So I'll quickly scale the default cube, scale in Z, and scale in the X to make it a bit more sort of block size. Remember to apply that scale, so control A and apply the scale there. I'm ready to go into the sculpt mode, so go across to the sculpting tab up the top here. So I'm in sculpting. If I bring the brushes out, you can see what they're called and you can see instantly that none of the brushes appear in here. However, if I click on the draw brush and then come across to the actual brush panel over here on the right hand side, when I click that, the orb brushes are in there. You'll find the orb brushes under draw, under clay strips, if I click on that, you've got the rock ones there, and under the scrape tool. I don't think there's any extras, but those are the main ones that I use. Okay, so let's turn our cube into some sort of rock type rune thing. I'm going to remesh it. What I'll do first is bring up my overlays and statistics so you can see how detailed my mesh is going. Remember, I started with the default cube and I haven't scaled it too much, so that's the size of my object. So when I go to remesh and I remesh it at 0.01, you should be able to get the rough size as long as you haven't changed the scale too much of your cube. So remesh, and you can see that I've got 300,000 faces. So most computers should be able to handle this without too much problem. The first brush I always like to use, especially when I'm doing things like rocks, is the scrape brush. So make sure you've selected the scrape brush on the left hand side and then come across to the picture here and click on that and it's the orb flatten brush that I really like. I'm going to actually mirror in the X, Y and Z just to speed it up a bit and flatten these edges out just by drawing across them and you can see already that it looks pretty nice straight away. Just add in a bit more depth to that scrape now this isn't that different from the current scrape tool, so if I go to the scrape brush there and use that, it's just a little bit more dynamic, it just has a bit more to it I would say. So I'm going to undo some of those scrapes, I think they're a little bit too much, to around there. You'll notice there's another one in the orb brush kit which is a sort of smoother one, so if I do that you can see it's sort of smoothing that scrape out slightly which you might like as well. I'm just going to go back to the orb brush and create some more scrapes in there. So I've got a nice sort of chunky scraped rock. Let's add a bit of texture to this. So if I go to the draw tool up here and into the brushes, let's find this orb rock one here. And I'll turn off symmetry now. So all my symmetry is turned off. I'll resize my brush, it's fairly big, and just draw across that lightly. And you can see I've gone a bit too far there if you're using a mouse for this, you may need to turn your strength down. I'm using pen pressure for my strength, so I just need to press a little bit lighter on my pen. And I'll vary the size of my brush a little bit as well. Make sure I'm going around, all the way around. And there we go. We've got a decent-ish looking rock. Let's add some details, so into the old brushes again. I really like this one if you want to create any of that sort of rune sort of design. Let's zoom in just a touch, and I'll resize my brush with F. And let's make some sort of runey thing. Brush is way too big, so let's try that again. Okay, so you can see there's some distortion here, so this brush takes a little bit more effort. 
and a little bit more care. So I'll try that again. So some sort of design like this, maybe a little bit sharper coming out here and sharpness coming out there. I don't know what I'm doing really. Smooth those out just a touch with shift. Like I say, this one takes a touch more care. You have to be a bit more careful with how you're pressing in and you might need to smooth out on occasions to just tidy things up. So a little bit more experience in sculpting needed here. Okay, so that looks kind of fun and it looks a bit roony. I should have probably brought that up a little bit more, but never mind. Maybe I'll add a bit to it up here. <laughs> it looks a bit stupid now, but it's a demonstration, isn't it? Yeah, it sort of works. Maybe something in here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting distracted from the tutorial. So what else have we got in here? We've got some lovely slashes like this one here, which I can just scrub across quite quickly and easily. Again, play with the strength depending on what you're using, graphics tablet or pen or whatever it is. So we've got a few scrapes and dinks there. Maybe let's try this one as well. I think some of them are a bit deeper. And this one's a slightly different stroke method. So it's called anchored. So you click and drag and then you, you can move from side to side to change the stroke and where it's going. So I'm not really concentrating much on the other side, but let's pretend that I have. <laughs> Okay, where did I say the other brushes were? So there's clay strips, and we've got some rocks in here. So I like to hold down the control key for some of these, and you can create some nice dents. But again, it's changing the strength just a touch, so you've got some subtle dents around the place. And you can create some quite sort of big areas of dents like this as well, just to add some variation to your shape. So vary the size, vary the strength, and that works reasonably well. And of course, vary the brush. And this again is the sort of click and drag one. So it's called anchor the stroke method. And you click it and drag it. And there my rune's looking kind of all right, isn't it? There's some more sort of bigger notch type dink things here. You might want to turn the strength up for these as well. And you've got some really interesting looking stuff. Just be careful of the, your angles. You might need to go round. Make sure you view it from a particular angle to get the stroke right. Probably a few more too many cuts in there, but you can get the idea and create some interesting looking rune things. Okay, so there's the orb brushes for you. Really useful and really worth bringing into your Blender projects, especially if you're doing that sort of stylized sculpting like they do in Blizzard. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.